Hey folks, it's Antara, and a fair amount of sniffles are in order because this week I'm uploading my last four PBR battles that, you know, are going up on this channel as opposed to other channels. Uh, and I'm leading off the week with my last battle with my James team. Um, but only a small amount of sniffles are in order because, um, I just said I did it with two other of my um, PBR teams. I'm poker shifting this one up, remaking it for Gen 5, and it's going to be right on back. Uh, yeah, Blake and Patrick made the cut, um, no one else actually, so that's actually kind of sad. Um, and Patrick is actually re a rebreed, as is Blake. Um, but anyway, my opponent today is Dragon uh, Boy 52 who I met on Smogon. And he's using a team with Pokemon that are standard for OU, but I haven't really seen in Wi-Fi before. Um, which is really nice. Like, I haven't seen Moltres, uh, I think, ever before in an OU singles match. Anyway, he goes ahead and flinches me with a fake out. And at first I'm like, oh man, he broke my Sturdy. Maybe that wasn't the best decision that I remembered. It's Gen 4. Sturdy doesn't do anything. Plus, I think this is a Rockhead breed, but whatever. So Hatterack takes a massive hit from Low Kick, which I was not expecting. I was definitely not expecting him to run Low Kick. Anyway, I'm going to go get, go ahead and use Stealth Rocks this turn. Uh, which is going to cripple Moltres when it d does eventually switch in. I see that I'm at 53 um, health, which isn't quite low enough to activate my Custat Fairy, um, but I catch a really lucky break. He obviously didn't realize that I had Custat Fairy, um, because he goes ahead and goes for the Pursuit, which, as you'll see later, is enough to get me into Custat range. So I am so super psyched. I, said, I send in Patrick. Um, and, you know, even a Pursuit isn't going to do much to me because I'm not switching out. I'm taking out this Ambipom. A super effective um, Pursuit does, you know, really did absolutely nothing. Um, and I'm not fearing anything from this little Ambipom. So Patrick's going to go ahead and use Psychic. It's going to hit super duper hard. Um, not enough to KO, but that's not surprising because I don't have any investment in, um, you know, whatnot. Uh, he goes ahead and pursues me again. I'm down to about 50% health here. Not the best situation in the world, but not the worst either. Um, my second Psychic is going to easily take it out, um, so that is great for me. So that Ambipom is now dead, and I've gotten the first KO of the battle. So, so far, things are going pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a Custap activation um, with an Earthquake, or not an Earthquake, rather an Explosion at some point. Okay, so he goes ahead and sends out Toxicroak, and I figure, okay, well, do I think I can take a Sucker Punch? And I realize this is a relaxed max uh, defense nature. I think I can take the Sucker Punch. So he goes ahead and goes for the Substitute, which I was not expecting, but I'm really glad that I went ahead and went with a 4x effective uh, Psychic rather than trying to switch out. Um, so that is obviously, obviously going to break his Sash. I mean, it's probably a one-hit KO. And so now that he sees I'm not going to be easily scared away, he's probably going to Sucker Punch on the next turn, which would be a great opportunity for me to switch in, but I don't want... I, again, I think I can take the Sucker Punch. So, moment of truth time, he goes ahead and Sucker Punches me, it's super effective, and I take that like it was nothing. Um, Patrick is seriously boss. So I go ahead and Psychic here. Uh, gonna be an easy KO, no problem at all, and Toxic Croak is dead. So, uh, woohoo! Um, Toxic Croak could have been a huge threat to my team based on how hard it hits. Um, but anyway, uh, next out is Moltres, and that's obviously, you know, there's nothing I can do here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and predict a fire type move. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and call Patrick back and send in Blake my uh, fire, that flash fire Arcanine to hopefully get the fire boost. Not that I need it, but mainly to get the free switch. So I go ahead and switch. Uh, Arcanine comes out and he makes an excellent play. Air Slash for the win. Um, I survive, luckily, um, and I'm going to be able to be faster uh, and go ahead and go for the Thunder Fang. I think I do the calcs and extreme speed wouldn't have killed. Um, and I, uh, so I think I probably did some research and just hope that I was faster. Um, I guess I'm hoping this is a not a scarf set. Uh, also, what's Moltres' base speed? I don't actually know off the top of my head. So I am faster. Uh, T Fang to the face, and Moltres is down. So that is excellent. And Blake did a little bit of um, got rid of one of uh, the worst, you know, the worst threats on his team. He goes ahead and sends out my low tick at this point, and I decide, well. Do I want to try the Thunder Fang? Do I want to switch out? And I realize I don't really have any safe switches. Unfortunately, he's faster, goes through the Hydro Pump, and takes me out. So I think, oh, this must be a Scarf set. Um, because he's uh, he outsped me. I mean, how else could he have done it? Um, but it's a Life Orb set, so I'm like, what? What the heck happened there? So I go ahead and send in Marilyn, um, thinking that it's going to force a switch. I'm going to go ahead and go for the Ice Beam, predicting the switch into Sceptile. 
Unfortunately, he stays in and goes for Hidden Power. It's either Hidden Power Electric or Hidden Power Grass. Either way, it's super effective, gets me down to 50% health, and that's awful. Uh, go ahead and do Ice Beam, but how much is that going to do? I mean, just take a look. Not very effective. I mean, Life Orb Recoil did more that turn, I think. Um, so, got some left leftovers recovery, but I'm going to have to call Maryland out uh, back, and that's just sad. And I'm just not sure how I'm going to deal with this Milotic. Anyway, I go ahead and switch in Uxie, uh, thinking I just need to hit, uh, I just need to uh, fodder someone um, so that I can get a safe switch into Tachikoma, um, which is my uh, Rotom. So anyway, yeah, Uxie is taken out, which is sad, pandas, um, but it did its job quite well this battle. So um, yeah, next up for me is Tachikoma, and I'm gonna go ahead and sub, either predicting a switch or hoping that his uh, Hydro Pump misses. Um, so I got the sub up. He uses Hydro Pump, uh, not fooled and not ready to switch out. It gets a crit, useless crit. I mean, uh, Rotom does not have the best of defenses. It's obviously going to take out my sub. I go ahead and sub again thinking, well, Hydro Pump's accuracy is pretty darn low, so I figure one of these days it's gonna, um, he's gonna miss. Anyway, he goes for the recover this turn, and I'm like, oh no! Wait, actually, that's not good. that's not bad, that's great. Um, so now I've got the sub up, I can go for the charge beam, see how much it does, and I see it does about a third. And so I'm like, okay, this is good, this is good. I get this attack, the special attack raise, and so I'm thinking, alright, next turn I can take it out. So it goes ahead and hydro pumps me on, um, on this next turn. Next turn? No, this is still the same turn. Um, but anyway, yeah, my substitute fades, and now the next turn, here we go, uh, charge beam to the face, I get a crit that probably mattered, really sorry about that, and I take out his Milotic. It really depended on what he was actually going to go for. If he'd gone for the recover, um, you know, it wouldn't have mattered, but why would he have gone for the recover? Plus, Hydro Pump could have missed. So, anyway, hard to say. He sends out Sceptile, and I realize, you know, again, don't really have a free switch into Sceptile, so I'm going to have to go ahead and take the Leaf Storm and hope that I can survive. Um, but, nah, not so much. Uh, he, so he gets the special attack uh, lower, and Rotom is taken out, and that is no good. Um, but And I realize that this guy is probably a huge threat to my team, so I go ahead and send out uh, Hadarak, and I decide it's time to go boom. He's got two Pokemon left, and he might he might switch out, which would be nice, um, in which case the custom fairy is wasted, but he doesn't. Um, and I go for the explosion, and that's going to take him out, um, so no more Sceptile, and he is now down to his last Pokemon while I have two. Uh, so that is really, really excellent. Sceptile, bye-bye. Um, and Hadarak, you did well. You did really, really well. And that's, and you, as I've said before, any day where you can use a Custap, um, prioritize Explosion, is a good day. Anyway, I know that his last Pokemon is Blaziken. I send out um, uh, Kyoko basically as a scout to see what he's going to do. Um, and I'm just going to uh, st you know, stay in. He's going to go for the Fire Blast, which is unfortunately going to take me out. I think I went for the... Um, whatchamacallit, the fake tears, just to lower his uh, special defense so that um, my Blastoise could have taken him out the next turn. Anyway, he's, this is a Life Orb set, so good to know. I was hoping that he'd get greedy and go for the uh, Sword Stance, but that didn't happen. So anyway, Marilyn's out with about 50% health. If he gets greedy, no, he goes for the superpower. Um, so now I'm like, can I survive this? Can I survive this? And I can. So this is excellent. I survive, but I have no health to speak of. Uh, Water Spout's power is so incredibly nerfed, uh, I'm thinking, well, I don't know whether I can take it out. So I go for the Water Spout, and I get a crit. And I'm like, yes! And I'm like, he survives with like 1 HP! I'm like, no! No! That's awful! So, um, but he's gotten the super power, so I'm wondering whether I can survive another one. So I've got 35 HP, I'm gonna go for the rest in case I survive. He goes for Hidden Power... Grass, I guess? Takes me out, and I'm like, oh well, well that's the way the cookie crumbles. But wait! He's got Life Orb Recoil. This isn't a loss at all. This is a freaking draw. That's right, this is a freaking draw. I do not know the last time I got a draw in PBR. So anyway, great game, Dragon Boy 52 Stay tuned for the next battle. And welcome back for part two. So anyway, um, before I get into the battle, I want to talk a little bit about my team. Uh, so two of these uh, team members are uh, originally from, or at least inspired by, Pokemon from my uh, original James team. You've got Blake, my Arcanine, which is actually now rebred, and it's a choice band set. 
Um, and then we've got uh, Patrick Mayuxi, which is a, a, um, a different, you know, capture RNG, what have you. Um, this is actually a specially defensive set, where, whereas the original Patrick was physically defensive. Um, anyway, uh, also Tux, you, my Empoleon, you might remember from my original OU team, my original Sam team. Um, it's also a slightly, it's a different breed in a slightly different set. Um, and Tangrowth, you've seen before, it's the same breed that was on my Val team and is also on my doubles team. Um, and then Galruk and um, Galvantula are two Pokemon that I use on my in-game team and I absolutely love them. So now let's get down to the match. Uh, my opponent is It's a Jersey Thing. I met him through Smoggin. Um, and yeah, so this was really, this I swear was one of my first UU matches uh, with this team. I think maybe it was my second. Anyway, he leads off with his Deoxys, um, and I was printing actually the Toxic, so um, I just would go for the Shadow Punch thinking that it would have been a bad idea for me to sub. Uh, but instead he goes for the Nightshade, which makes me think he might not run the Toxic. So um, anyway, I do, well it looks like it's going to be a 2 hit KO, my uh, Shadow Punch, which is great. Anyway, he withdraws his Fatty, his Deoxys, and I predict this and go for the Substitute. Uh, and this is awesome, he sent out his Bisharp, um, and I'm behind a sub and everything. I've got the super effective Earthquake, which is nice. He's going to go ahead and withdraw, predicting that, and goes into his uh, Suicune, his Surf... Oh, yeah, that's right, I go for the Focus Punch, because um, this is obviously a, an Iron Fist set. Um, focus Punch uh, was a better move, I figured, for 4x effective rather than 2x effective, and I was behind a sub anyway. So again, this looks like it's probably going to be a 2-hit KO against his, uh, his Suicune. Which is really awesome. So his Smurf is obviously going to break my uh, break my uh, sub with that uh, Scald. Uh, interesting that it's running Scald, um, which is a really good move to have against a physical attack attacker. But anyway, as I predicted, Focus Punch is a two-hit KO. Okay, I got a crit there, but I don't think that crit matters. Hard to say, really. Um, so anyway, Clank is up to 268 HP, um, and he sends out his Umbreon, and I decide I'm just going to stay in, um, go for the sub. Uh, amazingly, I'm I'm slower, which is actually really cool because Umbreon is pretty slow, at least most builds that I've seen. Anyway, so now I'm behind a sub, I'm going to go ahead and go for the Focus Punch. He goes for the Protect, so he's just going to Protect Stall me a little bit, but that's actually going to help me because I'm going to get more Leftovers recovery, so uh, whatevs, it's all good. Um, I you know, Technically, Patrick is uh, is my lead, my Uxie is still my lead, but um, I find actually that... Uh, you know, the best strategy in Gen 5 really seems to be don't be too attached to your lead. Uh, play it flexible. If you see, if you can predict your opponent's lead, then go, uh, then go for something that's a better counter to it. Anyway, I'm really surprised it don't take out that Umbreon um, in one hit, but... And I believe it's going to take me out with Assurance this turn. Oh no, I survived with 45 HP and I go for the Earthquake. Um, yeah, I was really worried that uh, this Umbreon was going to be able to wall me because, you know, I've seen what my Umbreon can do. Anyway, I'm down to 68 HP, um, and I'm pretty sure this is the turn that Clank is going to die. Um, no, actually, I go ahead and switch it out. I decided to save it for later. Um, so at this point, I go ahead and send out Kazulu as he goes for his uh, for a Nightshade. That's going to be a 4-hit KO for me, so I'm not fearing too badly. In fact, I could switch out now and get all of my health back with Regenerator. Um, I absolutely love Tangrowth, and I love this set. Um, he's going to go ahead and go for the Taunt, uh, which is a good move, uh, and I believe... No, I thought I was going to go for the Sleep Powder. I'm not sure why I didn't, but I'm glad I didn't. Um, anyway, Powerlift does nothing. Um, you know, it is a Deoxys D. It's not really that surprising. It takes a lot to kill those guys. Um, he goes for the Recover, um, and actually, all the while thinking this, I was thinking to myself, why don't I use Deoxys D instead of uh, UC? Um, I mean, they have similar attack, uh, you know, Deoxys D has way, way more defense, um, and I was just thinking, you know, Deoxys can learn Stealth Rock, um, it can learn, you know, it has a recovery move, a reliable recovery move, much better than Wish, which was what I run on my UC. Um, the reason, and I, I settled on this later, the reason that I'm, I'm going to keep running Yuxi is because Yuxi gets Heal Bell, and that fatty does not. So anyway, he's going to go ahead and go for the recover here. Uh, I think I'm waiting for my taunt to expire. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, so yeah, another power up to the face. Um, power up's not the best move in terms of accuracy, but it's, it does seem to be doing pretty well today. Um, I think I go ahead and call back Kazulu here, which is kind of funny because I had switched out at the point where it's at max health. I think I was getting it to the point where I was hoping he'd go for the recovery, and indeed, he goes for the recovery and gets me a really safe switch with uh, into my Hugabug. Um, 
which is a different uh, set than my original Hugglebug, which, um, I'm sorry, my original um, Foop, which was my original Galvantula. This is still a Life Orb set, but it now runs Compound Eyes because you kind of got to run Compound Eyes on, uh, on these guys because, yeah, anyway. So he's going to go ahead and call back um, and go into his um, Arcanine. I kind of predicted this, but I didn't want to over-predict, and I really wanted that thing dead. So anyway, um, I go... Yeah, so he is... Uh, it's a leftover set, so probably a bulky set. Obviously carrying the extreme speed, which has greater priority than my um, priority sucker punch. That kind of sucks, but oh well. So his Arcanine takes me out. I really... I don't think I could have survived another round of Stealth Rocks, which is why I didn't switch out. I go ahead and send out my Arcanine here, thinking I'll probably be able to scare him away. Um, he goes for another extreme speed... Uh, does a decent amount of damage. Uh, I go ahead and go for the close combat, really hoping that it can take him out. Um, you know, it's going to be the attack that does the most damage, um, I guess. Uh, I get the defense drops, and I'm s he's still alive with like a quarter HP, so I'm going to have to switch out, fearing the extreme speed. And I go ahead and send in Patrick, who even though he's a uh, specially defensive uh, build... Oh yeah, the uh, Yuxi is on this team to take on one Pokemon and one Pokemon only. Uh, Nidoking. When I was playtesting, I was having the worst of times with Nidoking because it's such a beast of this gen. And so Yuxi, um, you know, is specially defensive, is not hit by Earth Power, and can one hit KO with Psychic, I believe. Maybe it's two hit KO, I have to, I have to remember. Um, anyway, um, he goes for the extreme speed again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go for Psychic here, and again, I'm pretty sure I invested a considerable amount of special attack EVs. Um, I'll have to I'll have to check and I'll put it in the annotations, um, just whether that's for one hit KOing or two hit KOing Nidoking. But basically, I figure that my opponent's not gonna um, think that, and just you know when I send in Yuxi against Nidoking, he's gonna be like whatever. Um, so anyway, um, I'm just stalling him out here. He's gonna keep going for the extreme speed. I think it's interesting that he doesn't seem to have any other attacking moves. Um, so yeah, another psychic. It's, I'm hoping for the special de uh, special defense drop. Uh, anyway, he goes ahead and switches out here. I guess he didn't really have to stop him for this fight. He goes ahead and sends out Fishar. Um, but unfortunately, he picked the exact wrong moment. Uh, because this is the turn that I decided to rest up, uh, regain all of my health. Uh, and this is a Chesto Resto set, so I wake up, and that's awesome. So now I'm going to be able to pull back Patrick at full health, and my rocks are up and everything. So I go ahead and send out Kazulu, who should be able to resist his attacks. He's going to go ahead and go for Substitute. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't... Oh, you know, okay, yeah, that was on the Switch anyway. So, as he goes for the Sword Stance, I'm just going to go ahead and go for the Earthquake to break the sub. Um, and I'm hoping that that Sword Stance is not going to be enough to um, KO me. But, um, you know, this is a specially defensive Kazulu, but, you know, specially uh, that basically just means balanced defenses. And um, it has a shit ton, pardon my language, of defense to begin with. Um, so I'm like, wow, I couldn't believe that Iron Head one hit KO'd. It was a crit. Not sure if the crit mattered. I will do the calcs. And so anyway, I'm like, oh, geez, what do I do? So I send in Tux, my Apollyon, um, and he's going to go ahead and go for the Sucker Punch. But I'm dark, I'm, I'm uh, Steel type, so I figure I could take it. Um, unfortunately, uh, that's a two hit KO. And I'm like, wow, that's intense. So anyway, I get off the Scald. He's going to go ahead and go for the Sucker Punch, but aha, I have agility. So I'm going to go ahead and boost my speed, and I'm thinking, you know, this is all a matter of prediction, I go for the Scald, and I am so lucky that paid off. I think he, you know, he must have thought I was going to just go for the, uh, the next agility, but that's awesome, because now I've gotten the agility up, I outspeed his entire team, um, yeah, Middle King isn't going to stand a chance, um, yeah, it's one hit KO'd, and that, that huge threat is no more, so that's really awesome. He sends out his all puppy. Um, and, but I'm not fearing anything from an extreme speed because, uh, you know, I am uh, steel type. So, in fact, that extreme speed is going to help me because it's going to get me down to within torrent range. So my scalds are going to be boosted, and that's really awesome. And Tux is cleaning up. So, yeah, uh, I love having him pulling on back. And yeah, his fatty's down to practically no HP. So even though it's really uh, defensive and Skull doesn't have the best, um, best power, you know, with Torrent, that's going to be enough to take it out, and that is the game. So I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, I love this team, and I plan on having lots more battles with this team, so um, if you play UU Gen 5, please challenge me. Um, and everyone out there, comment, rate, subscribe. So long, folks.